Schistosomiasis is a tropical disease caused by a group of parasitic worms called schistosomes. These worms are also called blood flukes. The disease has affected people for thousands of years, and evidence of the disease has even been found in Egyptian mummies. Schistosomiasis is also known as Bilhartsia, named after Theodore Bilharts, who first described the parasite in humans. It's estimated that over 200 million people around the world are infected with these parasites. In sub-Saharan Africa alone, it causes over 200,000 deaths each year. Schistosomes have a very complex and interesting life cycle involving humans, snails, and fresh water such as lakes, ponds, and reservoirs. Five main types of schistosomes are responsible for most human disease. They differ in their distribution, the kind of disease they cause, and the type of snails that they live in. Hematobium is mostly found in parts of Africa and the Middle East and causes disease in the urinary and genital areas. Mansoni are mostly found in Africa, South America, and the Caribbean. Japonicum in parts of China and Southeast Asia, Mekong-e in Cambodia and Laos, and Guineensis in Central Africa. These affect mainly the bowel and liver. Let's have a look at their life cycle. Infected humans pass schistosome eggs through their feces or urine into fresh water. These eggs then hatch into larvae and infect certain species of snails. After a period of development in the snail, they're released back into the water in a form called sicarii. The sicarii swim and penetrate the skin of a human and can enter the body of someone using the water. Once in the body, they find their way through the lungs and into the liver, where they grow into adult worms. They then migrate into blood vessels surrounding specific organs, where they can live for many years. Some species of schistoazoma like to live around the bowel, whereas other species prefer living around the bladder. These adults can lay thousands of eggs a day. Some of the eggs find their way back into the water through urine or feces and start the life cycle again, but some eggs get trapped in the organs. Schistosomiasis can cause both short-term and long-term disease. When the sicarii penetrate the skin, some people develop an itchy rash called swimmer's itch or fisherman's itch. Some people can develop a syndrome called acute schistosomiasis, also called katayama fever. This occurs about four weeks after being exposed to the parasites for the first time. It usually presents with a fever and a range of other symptoms, such as diarrhea, rash, and respiratory symptoms. This is usually self-limiting. The long-term effects of schistosomiasis are more serious and occur as a result of the eggs that are trapped in various organs. The trapped eggs can lead to changes in tissues characterized by the formation of granulomas with a lot of inflammation around them. In the bladder, this can lead to hardening of the bladder wall, obstruction, and can even result in a type of bladder cancer. This can present with symptoms such as blood in the urine. Intestinal schistosomiasis can lead to symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, and blood in the stool. In the liver, the eggs can cause scarring of the tissues around the vessels of the liver, obstructing them, and can cause enlargements of the liver and spleen. Other organs that can be affected include the genital system, lungs, and sometimes even the brain. Chronic infection, especially in children, can lead to anemia. How is the disease diagnosed? Well, the disease can be diagnosed from the urine and stool using special techniques or by biopsy of tissues and examining it under the microscope. There are blood tests that can look for antibodies against the parasite. There is no vaccine against schistosomiasis yet, but there is effective medication to treat the disease. They usually work by killing the adult worms, which means that the eggs are no longer produced. Recovery of the affected organs depends on the type and extent of the damage that has already taken place. So how do we prevent the disease? Preventing the disease can occur at various points in the worm's life cycle. Remember the life cycle? The spread of schistosomiasis needs an infected human who contaminates the water, a snail, and subsequent contact with another human who uses the contaminated water. The disease can be eliminated in humans using medication. In areas that have a lot of disease, entire communities or targeted at-risk groups can be treated with medication to reduce the incidence of disease. Large-scale drug treatment has been an effective way to control schistosomiasis. Another approach is to reduce the contamination of water. This involves activities such as educating people on proper sanitation and providing necessary facilities such as toilets. 
Some countries have tried to eliminate snails by using chemicals or biological control methods. Their effectiveness has been variable. The other way to prevent the transmission of disease is through reducing contact with contaminated water. Tourists can be advised not to swim or wade in areas that are known to have schistosomiasis. However, avoiding water can be hard to do for people who live near water and depend on it for their livelihood or for basic functions. Providing clean water sources for drinking, cooking, or washing clothes can reduce contact with contaminated water. So that's an overview of schistosomiasis. For more information, have a look at the websites below.